Do you know how to quickly create a frame around an image? Or how to align objects with a single click? Check out these 10 CorelDRAW productivity tips, which may surprise even the most experienced users. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial. The Polygon tool is great for making, well, polygons. With five sides, I'll create a pentagon, and I'm holding the control key to constrain its aspect ratio. Now I'll activate the shape tool and click and drag one of the nodes. If I keep control pressed again, I can drag out a nice even star, or without control, I can twist things around. When I pull a node all the way through to the other side, I can get some very interesting shapes. And it gets even better when I start with a polygon with more sides. I'll double click to add a node here, and whatever change I make to this new node happens at all the other points as well. Making these nodes smooth, adding more nodes, and adjusting control handles makes for even more possibilities. And these shapes are quite fun to color with the Smart Fill tool. The Object, Align, and Distribute menu lists all of the shortcuts for the various alignment commands, L for Align Left, R for Right, etc. It's easy to use these shortcuts on my selected objects. I'll press T to align tops, B to align bottom, L to align left. The last object selected stays in place, and the others move accordingly. Now I'll press C to align centers horizontally, and finally P to center to the page. I can also group before aligning. The Transform Docker goes beyond simply moving or rotating objects. With this group selected, I can change its position, such as moving it 1 inch to the right and 1.5 inches up. If I want three of these groups, spaced 3 inches apart, I can change X to 3, Y to 0, add two copies, and click Apply. For rotating, I can rotate 45 degrees about the center, or make seven copies about the top point. I can also mirror, or mirror copy horizontally and vertically to the right. I have similar options for sizing and skewing. I can also repeat operations, such as creating one copy at a time by clicking Apply repeatedly. If you don't feel like grabbing your calculator, let CorelDRAW do the math for you. I have this rectangle, which has these dimensions, and my units are in inches. I can easily change the width to 3 inches, but I could also change it to 3 and 3 sixteenths of an inch by entering the actual fraction as 3 plus 3 divided by 16. I can also switch units, say 75 millimeters or 1200 pixels. The unit conversion is done automatically. If I want another rectangle exactly one third as wide as this one, I'll duplicate it and change its width to four divided by three. And if I want to move this rectangle to the right by 100 millimeters plus an eighth of an inch, I can enter that in the Object X position field. I can enter math symbols or units wherever I have a numerical field. For example, back in the Transform Docker, I can make a copy that's 325 pixels times 3 to the right. If I'm zoomed in while working on one small part of a document and want to move to another part, I don't have to zoom out and back in again. I can click the navigator icon at the lower right corner and drag my mouse to the spot I want to see. Or I can press the N key to get the nano preview, where I can click a new spot. To zoom back out, I can press F4 to see everything, including objects that are off the page. Pressing Shift F4, or double clicking the zoom tool, zooms to just the page. If I have a command I use all the time, I don't have to always go to the menu for it. If I want easy access to the document grid, for example, I can open View, Grid, Document Grid. 
I'll press Ctrl and Alt and drag this command onto the workspace or onto an existing toolbar. Now I can click the icon to turn the grid on and off. I can remove the icon by pressing Alt while dragging it away. I can easily create a color palette based on colors in a document. At the bottom of the palette's docker, I'll click the plus sign and choose New Palette from the document. I'll name it Photo. Now this palette appears under My Palettes, and the colors are displayed here to the right. To put a simple frame or border around any rectangular shape, I'll first select the object. Then I'll press Shift while double-clicking the Rectangle tool. Now I have an outline, whose width and style and color I can adjust. For the color, I'll use the eyedropper to match a color in the image. NDE, or non-destructive effects, are effects I can add to an object that can be turned on and off, rearranged, etc. These are listed in the Properties Docker by clicking the FX tab. The swimsuit in this example has a few effects already added, and I'll click the plus sign to add one more. To save these effects as a style for use in other objects, I'll right-click on the object and choose Object Styles, New Style From, Bitmap Effects. I'll give this style a name, and now I can see this style in the Object Styles Docker. Going back to my page with the aligned shapes, I can apply this set of effects, either by dragging or by selecting the object first, then double-clicking the style. If I want to save this style for use in other documents, I can use the Export Style Sheet option. Finally, for this multi-page document I've been using for this tutorial, I can choose View, Page Sorter View. This gives me an at-a-glance look at all of my pages. I can drag and drop to rearrange the order, and the context menu provides options for renaming, inserting, duplicating, etc. From here, I can double-click the page that I want to open. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on productivity tips in Corel Draw. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial.